Zoom on the N8, when you're taking still pictures, I actually personally don't recommend that you use the digital zoom in the still <coughs> camera um, because it's effectively just cropping the image and then it upscales it again. And that process actually degrades the image. My personal recommendation is if you if you took a shot which you wanted to crop later on, do that on the in the uh, onboard editor, which is on the N8, and, and then upload it, do it that way. In video, however, um, digital zoom is a, is a different thing, um, and actually works very, very well indeed. So you can go from um, here, which is whoops, this view, which I took right by the rain, so you can get an idea of, of, of the sort of effect, um, through to uh, three times zoom. These are screen grabs from, from video. These aren't still pictures. These are literally screen grabs, which is uh, why they, they don't look quite so good as still images. Uh, but for video still grabs, they're, they're, they're very good. Um, and this gives you an idea of the sort of the zoom range that you that you have available with the N8. It's, a, it's roughly three times. Now again, my personal recommendation here is that you either use the zoom, you either use it at wide angle, so where we have before, this sort of view, or you use it at the, either the sort of two to three times. So I'm not going to go into sort of a lot of technical details in terms of why it works better the more you zoom in, um, but just take my word for it, when you get to about two times zoom, the product uh, actually improves the performance of uh, digital zoom. There's a, there's a switching mode that happens around that sort of two times zoom point. Um, as I say, I'm not going to go into the intricacies of why that happens, but basically about two times zoom, the, the video uh, becomes sharper, and then use it from two times up to three times quite happily. But I'd probably try and avoid using the sort of the lower part of the zoom. I'd use it so use it a one time zoom, or full wide angle, or go from two to three times. And so you know roughly where um, two times zoom is on when you're using the N8. On the left hand side of the viewfinder is a is a bar which denotes the uh, position of the zoom that you're on, and it's roughly level with the eye of the Nokia logo. I know it doesn't sound terribly precise, um, but uh, that was just sort of you know, the easiest way to explain it. Use it either the, with no zoom or use it from the eye onwards, you know, maybe remember it that way. Cameras are like human eyes, um, that is that they um, get similarly affected by direct sunlight. Um, and the NA being a very wide angle lens, um, if you have got strong sunlight coming directly or from the side into your picture or video, you may see flare. Uh, and to combat that, normally just holding your hand, depending on with the position of the sun, so if I was taking the here <coughs> and the sun was coming in from the side, then just shielding like this as I'm, trying, as I'm taking the picture or the video is normally sufficient just to sort of shield it. Common occurrence um, that people find might be uh, a situation where you have a very contrasty blue sky and you've got some nice uh, contrasty clouds there. You want to preserve that as much as possible. If, the, if the, the picture or video is predominantly the lower, um, say the, the ground, for want of a better way of describing it, then it would be metering of that area rather than say the sky, the sky might end up being overexposed and it may spoil the effect that you're trying to get depending on where you are tomorrow. But if you just lift, if you just angle the device slightly so there's more of the sky and the sea than the ground for example, that may be enough to get the, the effect that you're looking to, to achieve. This is uh, an image of the reflection of some lights uh, actually in a, in a restaurant on the top of a piano. And um, what I did here to take this shot was I positioned this area in the center of the frame, pressed halfway down, you get a confirmation in the viewfinder that's focused directly with the sort of a green rectangle in the center of the frame. Then if you recompose the picture as you wanted to, so in this case I then positioned the lights off center, it's locked the focus and the exposure for that area, which is our main point of interest. Otherwise, it may not have been able to focus here because of insufficient contrast, and again, the exposure may have been 
uh, less than optimal. Okay. When you're taking pictures with a still camera, um, if you go into close-up mode, um, you can focus down to about 10 centimeters. Uh, normally, it's about 30 centimeters uh, without using close-up mode. For video, however, um, this, the system that we use on the N8 is optimized to ensure that any, pretty much anything from around about three feet, uh, 90 centimeters or so, up to infinity, will pretty much look in sharp focus. So you don't, when you're shooting video, as long as your subject is about three feet away, you don't need to worry about focus. It makes it really, really easy. In some situations, uh, because of the way NA calculates its white uh, balance, uh, which is basically understanding what type of lighting conditions that you're currently shooting under. Uh, in a situation like this, where we have a very large amount of content, which is a single color, it may fall the white balance. You'll, you'll probably, you should see it in the viewfinder, you'll know it's wrong. Um, in this case, quite often using the daylight setting uh, of, of the manual white balance options that are available either in the still camera or the video camera um, will allow you to get something much more predictable. This is actually how I took this shot as I put it into daylight. Um, so if you're shooting outdoors, you can leave it, you can shoot, you can put it on daylight in and, and, um, and you won't have really anything to worry about there. This is a picture of my daughter. Um, Lucy on a holiday last year in the highly exotic location of Isle of Wight. Um, and this is, uh, I put this in for a couple of reasons. One was to um, say about flash. This is, although it's taken, uh, we have lovely weather on this particular day, um, and even though she's bathed in sunshine, because of the position of the sun, her face would otherwise have been quite dark. So I actually use flash to take this picture. And the flash system on the N8 is really very good. It uses two flashes, <coughs> one to calculate how much light is required, and then the, five, the second flash is the one that it uses to take the picture. So you'll always get two flashes with the N8. Don't, even when you're not using it in red eye reduction mode, you always get two flashes. Um, it's not a, some people get a little bit concerned about not using it in red eye mode, and yet why am I getting those two flashes? The second reason why I put it in here is that if you are taking pictures with flash, and your subject is an extended distance. Uh, so let's say you find yourself in a bar tomorrow or something like that, either during the day or in the evening, and you want to use the, the flash to take some still pictures. Putting the camera into the red eye reduction mode gives about an extra 10 to 15% more flash range. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details why, but I'll just take my word for it that it works. So.